Happy Thursday, everyone. We are live at five here in the comfort of our homes. It is Thursday, April 2nd. Very good. I, okay, I'm Paul Wontorek. I'm Beth Stevens. We're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hi, how are you doing, Caitlin? I'm doing, I'm doing pretty okay today. There was sunshine, so I'm happy. Yes, yes, spring, spring is coming, spring is coming. Uh, hey, someone that we really like is here. Hey Beth, who is in, who's in the holding pen? In the, in the holding pen, we have Tony winner, John Benjamin Hickey. He's an actor and a director and a treat to talk to. And you know what? I, yeah, he, he uh, directed Plaza Suite. And I, I came back from Boss. I got, I'm so lucky I got to see it right before it ended up there. And uh, I can't wait till we get to see this on Broadway. So we're, we're all being extremely patient. We're gonna find out what John's been up to. But first, let's do some news. Today, I have to be the bear of bad news because we're starting off with something really, really sad. Uh, okay, well, this one, um, this one hit me hard, Paul. Yeah, Adam Schlesinger, hard. who we know from Crybaby, and everyone knows from Fountains of Wayne. He's a, such a talented guy. Uh, passed away yesterday from complications from the coronavirus. He yeah. was 52. Um, everybody knows the song, Stacy's Mom. You know, she's got it going on. And, we, you know, she, he worked a lot on Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And he worked in every medium. He, he, was, he worked in film. He worked on TV. And, of course, he worked on Broadway and in theater. He also did Act of God. And um, and he was famous for the Tom Hanks movie. He did this that song, That Thing You Do. It was a big hit for him. Uh, this is just a hard one. It really was. He was actually working on a new show with Sarah Silverman called Bedwetter that was supposed to be off Broadway. Right, right. I mean, he, he always uh, loved challenging himself. And he was a real New Yorker, grew up in New York and New Jersey. And it's just a loss. He was such a talented guy and funny and smart and just knew who he was and really had like a niche for niche for his himself. Yeah. He also worked on the Tonys and um, mm. uh, it's not just for gays anymore. Oh that, yes. You know, Classic. yes. Uh, yeah. He did. He worked a lot. Um, he worked with David Jabberbaum on cry baby and on act of God and David Jabberbaum had worked on the daily show. So that was some of his connection to the world of comedy and Colbert right. and a bunch of other things. So it's a great loss. He had two daughters, and um, I hate the I hate this news. I know. So there you go. Sorry to be a bummer, guys. I know. I know. It's horrible, but we have to talk about what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And and other news is that we are going to have to wait a little bit longer to see this world premiere new musical. We are. You are speaking about uh, what's it called? Identical, because they're identical. And so this is a mutual version of Parent Trap. Everybody knows the Parent Trap, or the other classic version, or the Lindsay Lohan version. You know the Parent Trap. I mean, her version's good to me. Just, uh, it was supposed to run in the UK uh, this summer, July 31st through August 22nd. Um, and they're, they're just going to push it to 2021. Um, it features a book by Stuart Patterson, music by George Stiles, and lyrics by Andrew Drew. Of course, Stiles and Drew worked on Mary Poppins, which I'm sure you all saw. And so we're going to find out more in the future. It's still happening, but uh, you have to wait a little bit longer. So just watch the Lindsay Lohan one. That's fine. <laughs> and we're all going to be able to sing along to Go, Go, Joe from the comfort of our own home. Wow, look at this photo you chose. <laughs> <laughs> wow, you just, you, this is like, this we really is just, there. that's just, that's Donny Osmond and all his, all his all right, Let me explain, let me explain. Wow. So I finally get some good news to say. The YouTube channel, The Shows Must Go On, is going to be streaming the shows of Andrew Lloyd Webber, the ones that have been uh, filmed. So this will be available at two o'clock uh, weekly for only 48 hours. And they're starting tomorrow with the 2000 production of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat, starring Donny Osmond and his towel. And his abs, yes. <laughs> his abs. This was yeah. formative for many people, not me, but others. Uh, Maria Friedman was in it, Richard Attenborough, and of course yeah. you saw in that photo, Joan Collins. Um, on Good Friday, next Friday, April 10th, they will have the Jesus Christ Superstar that 
starred Ooh. with Mention and Melanie C and Chris Moyles. I remember that yep. one. Lots of guy liner in that one. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is going to be ongoing. They're going to announce the, f the future productions later. And uh, yeah, so, and it's also for, it's also a charity. It's a, people can make donations to Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS and other charities. Just, you know, everyone's trying to help each other out here. And what better way than watching those films? I'm a little bummed. I'm a United Lloyd Webber super fan. And I'm yes. a little bummed that um, Aspects of Love was never filmed. I'm just throwing it out there. I also want to say, what? You did make me see it, so that that's some. Um, Andrew Lloyd Webber has been very like out there on with all this online stuff. You know what oh, I mean? He's yeah. he's been really like it's been really fun to watch him sort of engage with people and yeah. So yeah. good job, good job, Dad. We used to call him Dad when Imogen brought it up. We still call him Dad. Good luck, Dad. Thank you, Dad. W. <laughs> Amazing, and the Drama League has given us an extra way to give some gratitude. So you know, I appreciate. This, the Drama League had some news and they didn't want it to come off like a cancellation because obviously every year the Drama League gives out, it's like the starriest, other than the Tony Awards, it's like the starriest event there is because I they honor really like, too. they honor like 398 people all at once, but not maybe 70, isn't it? It's a lot. It's a I long forget. Long yes, yes. It's a lot of people. Anyway, so they announced today that in lieu of their traditional award ceremony, they will present the 86th annual celebration as the Reenvisioned Gratitude Awards, a digital fundraising event. Uh, we'll celebrate the efforts of contributors in the theater community, including stage directors, designers, venue workers, and administrators, and additional performers. Nominations, so there still are nominations for the Gratitude mm -hmm. Awards, and a digital show date will be released in the coming weeks, along with information on virtual attendance and participation. I don't really know what that means, but I mean, I'm in. You don't have to wear pants, I think. That's what it means. <laughs> Beth, we don't ever have to wear pants. That's the world we live in now. That's that true. is that is our world, right? Right, Caitlin? I'm yeah. wearing pajama pants, yeah. <laughs> I'm wearing I'm wearing a blazer and workout shorts. So, oh. you know. Yeah. Secrets have it's been Yes. It's a look. Busy That's day. A look. Busy I, day. I can't wait to see what John Benjamin Hickey's wearing. So, uh, <laughs> Beth, we're going to slide you out. And Caitlin, why don't you tell everyone about today's? Gladly. Yes, guys, we have John Benjamin Hickey here with us today as today's Live at Five Home Edition guest as we're live on both YouTube and Facebook. Most recently, he was on Broadway in The Inheritance, which he left to go direct the upcoming Plaza Suite revival starring Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick. So he's been a little busy. Um, he's been in step, he has seven Broadway acting credits to his name, and he took home the Tony Award for his featured performance in The Normal Heart. So he knows what he's doing. We're so excited to talk to him about everything he's been up to during this time. You guys can follow him on social media at J Ben Hickey because he's got a he's a, he's a three named guy. Um, leave all of your questions down in the comments below and please welcome John and Paul. Hello, John Hickey, John Benjamin Hickey. How are you? You can call me Hickey, please. Uh, just Hickey, just Hickey. Paul, before we get to any. Uh, important questions. I have a very important question. Did I see that right? Was Joan Collins in a in a televised Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat with Don? Yes. This there she is. I, there there I, we, we, yes. My yes. Where, where 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 did that happen and how You know, a lot of crazy things happened in the 90s. Yeah, they should. I believe it was the 90s. And yes, yes. It, it, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is going to be something to see. I would call that uh, a serious mood lifter. That, uh, that. Are you, are you um, at home looking for mood lifters? Have you been succeeding at like, binging things and making yourself, keeping you know the joy alive? Absolutely. I have watched a lot of great television in the three weeks mm -hmm. I've been in my apartment. Uh, Babylon Berlin, which I'm sure everybody's Ooh. Oh, yeah, I haven't done that one. I know about it. It's, uh, it's okay. insane. And you have to watch it in the original German with subtitles, not the dubbed version. Of course. Um, my brilliant friend, have people told you about that on HBO? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, and you know, then, then I watch some good crap too. But I've been I've been watching a lot of TV. I like that. Those are highbrow, yeah, highbrow options. Highbrow. I have my lowbrow moments too. But I would expect nothing less from yeah. you. Yeah, <laughs> Avalon Berlin and Joan Collins and Joseph, I got those are those are must sees. So let's get this out of the way. You actually um, 
you you shared with me that you uh did let's talk about a little bit about your health recently. Absolutely. I uh the day after we they closed the uh, Broadway down, closed uh, all the shows down. I was feeling funny, went to my doctor, got tested, got my positive results back a few days later hmm. and spent two weeks really brutally uh, sick, like really. Wow. Sick. But, you know, um, I clearly came through it and am two and a half weeks now um, symptom free and feel great. And given everything we're hearing and understanding now, uh, as I said to you, Paul, I consider myself profoundly lucky. Yeah. I only got really, really, really sick. I never felt like I needed to be at an emergency room or in a mm -hmm. hospital. I had a doctor mm -hmm. monitoring me the whole time. I was very lucky. And, uh, and you know, I, I, I came out okay and feel, and feel like myself again. But it's, as we all now very well understand, it is a brutal, brutal sickness. So, yeah very happy to be here with you and i as also i told you it's the first time i've worn a shirt in like three weeks so i kind of feel like i'm on my way to a wedding you i'll go in, <laughs> shirt, go in your gym shorts and blazer <laughs> it's a whole new world out there i mean you know i mean if you even think about uh we were talking about the the rosie o'donnell show your stars uh, your friends and stars, Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick. You are the director of this Plaza Suite revival that um, that I was lucky enough to get to see up at the Colonial Theater in Boston. Uh, they were on, and you know, it, it's so fun to see. I find it so fascinating because someone like Sarah Jessica Parker specifically is such a fashion style icon, and it's so amazing to just see how immediately comfortable everyone is, just being like in their comfy clothes, like on the couch and. It's just like kind of like this equalizer, right? What 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 we're all going through as a world. Yeah, it sure, it sure is. Uh, you know, she's not a person like I remember one day when we were deep into rehearsal, she came in. She's like, you know, I've been wearing the same pair of jeans for the last three and a half weeks of rehearsal. It's been so nice to come to work and not have to worry about what I'm, you know, wearing. Um, and I'm I'm sure they feel that way at home right now. Uh, yeah, I just want I I want to say that Rosie thing. I think that was the Sunday at the end of my week of brutal sickness. And boy, talk about a mood lifter, Paul. That was a thing that where I saw like it put a huge smile on my face. It was so great to see the community come together and uh, extremely well done. Thank you. Thank you for making us all feel better. Well, when you when you say Rosie O'Donnell wants to do something, everyone lines up. So, yeah, you know, just just. She's one of those people. Um, you know, I want to say that I saw Plaza Suite, like I said, and I remember telling you afterwards that it was such a, it's a classic uh, Neil Simon comedy from the, the late 60s, right? Late 60s? 68, yeah. And, and it's a very, uh, I, I remember telling you that it really lifted me because I, at the time I said this, and I was thinking about this right before we did this interview, I thought like, God, the world just needs this. The world just needs something warm and loving and just funny and just that that neil simon spirit was so fantastic to experience in what i considered two months ago a very difficult world and i was thinking about how fantastic it will be after what we're all going through to get to to have this play because it really is kind of like it's just there's something just so uh like almost in our dna about that kind of comedy and that kind of writing right yeah yeah he you know, we haven't heard him, his voice in so long. Yeah. He is in our DNA. I mean, Neil Simon basically created the idea of what we now know as sitcoms. Right. He totally. The first one who did that. And there was a period of time where he was the, you know, most successful, most produced voice in the history of the American theater. And to not have heard him on Broadway in such a long time, you could feel that in Boston. You could feel yeah. the audience hearing something that they didn't even know they missed as much as they did. And then to see those two actors um, having such a great time in all six of their parts, because they each yeah. three different yeah. parts, and having such a great time together. I mean, I don't think even they expected to enjoy each other as much as they did. I mean, they uh, liked each other a whole lot they yeah. for a long time, but they really loved working together. And I think 
the combination of Neil's amazing writing, it's just such a beautiful play, and and the two of them together really had a kind of a, a electricity that people just loved so much in Boston and responded to, and we were so looking forward to getting to do it in New York, and we still are, of course. When this which happens. of your, which of the, it's three different, it's all set in the same hotel suite in uh, at the Plaza Hotel, and, and it's three different couples, and it's sort of different little sort of love stories about each of the couples. They each have their own things going on. Which of your, um, what's your favorite to watch Sarah, Jessica, and Matthew perform? Because they're all just sort of, Insane. Which of who are my favorite of those two actors? Who do I like best? Who do you um, like better? Impossible <laughs> to pick. Impossible. I mean, I all three of them are amazing for very different reasons. The, yeah. the first play is a, a play about the uh, disillusion, but the possibly the end of a long marriage, twenty yeah. years, and that's how long Sarah and Matthew have been married. Wow. A very heartbreaking play, and it was the first time Neil was writing to a deeper place, something that. Yeah. He, 20 years later with Brighton Beach um, and all the, the Brighton Beach trilogy, you know, really, uh, really, really went there. But it's a beautiful and unexpectedly uh, heartbreaking and moving play. The second play is amazing because Matthew's playing a Hollywood producer. Who it's, it's outrageous. Him, and because of Matthew's just profoundly innate sweetness and goodness, uh -huh. light, touch as a comedian, he turns this character who could easily be despicable and how do you actually kind of want for these school sweethearts to get back together. The last play, play about a mother and father of the bride trying to get their daughter to come out of the bathroom to get married, yeah. is one of the great pieces of comic architecture in the history of the theater. So, I, I mean, I think yeah. all three of them are amazing, but that third play is really like wow, it's just like, it, it's like gangbusters how well it works. How's that for a diplomatic answer? <laughs> I, my, I, I thought the end of the first one was heartbreaking. So Jessica Parker was heartbreaking. It was a beautiful, it, it was all fantastic. Yeah, I just can't, are you- See her get to go to, because we, we've seen Matthew a lot in, in the theater, of course, and he's yeah. so amazing in this and doing things he's never gotten to do before. But, you know, we haven't seen Sarah on stage in a long time. It's right. really great to see her return to the place from which she came. Mm -hmm. So are you, um, are you not, you guys are still rehearsing or going over the script at all? Or are you just kind well, of like. Once a week and I say, have you run your lines this week? And they say yes. <laughs> uh, they're very good about, uh, as a matter of fact, we finished in Boston and had only uh, two weeks before we started Tex in New York. Uh, before everything came to a stop. And we got together in those two weeks and ran the play okay. almost daily. Um, so they they will stay on top of it uh, because they want to remember their lines. But also I think when we do come back, there won't be any dilly-dallying. You know, we will, sure. if comes back, we will all want to get to work as soon as possible. And the Broadway shut down the night of our invited dress. So we never had a chance wow. to Wow. In New York. So I think when we get to come back, it will be game. They will be like, let's let's get out there and do this. You know? The energy on Broadway will be insane when 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 everything is back. I mean, it, God, that's going to be amazing, isn't it? I mean, I yeah. Sarah Jessica posted something when we closed saying, you know, Broadway doesn't stay quiet for long and it's something like that. And mm. it's true. Like New York is not New York without Broadway. So we will figure this out. Yeah, I want to, I have to, um, you know, I, I went to a different shop because I want to point out that yellow, beautiful inheritance poster on the wall behind you. Yeah, Cause I, you know- I never touch my computer for fear of the whole thing shutting down. Um, <laughs> the, uh, inheritance poster from the young- Vin London. And then uh -huh. London and the Noel Coward when we did it there. And it's a beautiful poster. I love the New York poster too, but that this yeah. is a special place in my heart because that's where it all started. And I'm that play, Matthew's play, afforded me the opportunity to work in London for a year. So uh, I was very, very lucky to be able to do that. Yeah, and you uh, you left the show to work on Plaza Suite with the intention of coming back, and obviously that that opportunity kind of went away. The, the play closed right before the shutdown, actually. Um, so did you, do you feel like you had good closure with it? Well, I mean, you know, I, I'll be completely honest. You know, I've been around long enough to know that there's no yeah. sure thing. 
you know, right. especially when you're doing a, a play, a very serious play that happens to be, this one happened to be seven hours long. You know, there were no sure things about me coming back, although everybody was really, really, you know, hoping and pushing that it would. And it was my dream to come back. I wanted to have, I've said this before, like that Cynthia Nixon moment of getting to, you know, yeah. in one job and run to another one. Um, yeah. Uh, but yes, when I said my goodbyes, I I made sure I said my goodbyes. And um, Tony Goldwyn, who replaced me, is a great old friend of mine and a great actor. And that transition was so beautiful. So it was so great to be able to kind of pass the torch to him. And he mm -hmm. had one of the great experiences of his life doing it. Uh, so, you know, you, you learn how to say goodbye in, in, when you're in the theater in a way that, you know, you're like, okay, goodbye, maybe see you soon, maybe not. So Yeah, you know, Beth actually gave me a, a really great question. She was saying that, you know, the inheritance in, in a lot of ways was about uh, life during a time of crisis, the AIDS epidemic. What you know, it's so interesting when you look at works of art and suddenly they become relevant in new ways. And what, what, do you, what lessons do you think we can learn from, from that beautiful play and those characters? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm going to, and I think I, Matthew Lopez would, would love this too. I'm going to say that the lessons you take from that play uh, are, you know, mortality about how easy it could, it can all be gone tomorrow. And yeah. that was a play about a generation who lived through uh, an epidemic, who lived through yeah. a plague. Um, and, and we're doing that again. And, you know, and I, and I, I think about Terrence, um, who I loved very of course. much. He was my yeah. hero and mentor. And, and uh, gave me my first job uh, on Broadway, in Love, Valor, Compassion. And, you know, for Terrence to be taken by a virus when he wrote so elegantly. Yeah. I mean, I, I think the inheritance will be, will be history will be very, very kind to that play because it's got such humanity in it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, the irony is I feel like we need that play now more than ever. It was one of the best experiences of my life. And uh, I, I wish I could have gone back to it, but boy, it was two years of yeah. good times and a lot of very I cute people. A lot of really young, good-looking, brilliant people who were doing all the yeoman's work in that. I mean, the, yeah. what, what those young actors were, what was asked of them, and what they what they did. Andrew Burnett and Kyle Solo and Sam Levine, all of them. Yeah, uh, breathtaking. Yeah, one of. One I'm. Of I'm down for a revival. Let's do it. Let's revive. <laughs> Everything next year that was supposed to happen this year will be a revival of sorts. So why not? It's all it's all very confusing now. What you you mentioned, Terry McNally and Love Dollar Compassion was um, again one of those fantastic companies. I remember seeing it so vividly. Um, what and you have your own personal relationship with Terrence, and I feel like Terrence really uh, such a big part of the community. Um, even when he didn't have a show, Terrence was always around. He was part of the fabric. Of the theater world, what what do you want people to to really know about him? Like what I don't know your own sort of personal relationship with him, and yeah. what share something. I, I wrote I I, I uh, wrote this great but not I, I don't, I'm not saying it's great because I wrote it, but this I got the <laughs> uh, um, Variety asked a few people to to write about right him. right we talked about this in this Variety piece that you know um, one of the things that I that I think of the most about Terrence, and this is very evident in the brilliant American masters, uh, every act of life that oh, I read about yeah. how much courage, how much valor uh, yeah. uh, Terrence had. Valor is courage in the face of adversity. And you know, he was writing his truth as a gay man back yeah. in, in the 60s, in the, you know, he he was not cloaking it in anything. Mm -hmm. He was really putting it out there without apology without fear um and and you 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 look at this man who was as gentle as they come and had the most extraordinary twinkle in his eye mischievous and was so deeply supportive but also loved gossip loved <laughs> what was going on it was so so funny but he had enormous courage and and i i think of that more than anything else because he also, also, it takes courage to keep going back to the drawing board. 
you know, yeah. writing plays. You know, I keep talking to Matthew about that. After the inheritance, what do you do? It's like, you just got to write another play, man, because we need them. We need yeah. them. Because and Terrence was an amazing example of somebody who was a great artist, mm -hmm. but it clearly wasn't precious to him because he just kept producing, you know? Right. Um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of reasons to, God knows, to mourn right now, but there are great reasons to celebrate that man's life. I mean, and to, for us to have known him and gotten to be, in yeah. the arts, you know, I think, I just want to say one more thing. The greatest performance I've ever seen on stage is Kathy Bates in the original production of Frankie and Johnny. Mm -hmm. One of the greatest thing I've ever seen. We could go on and on about Terrence. We should have a whole Terrence show. I wish I, I wish I saw that's one I really wish I saw because I love that piece so much. Yeah, there are yeah. Some Nathan in Love Valor, uh, Nathan and Lisbon Trot. I mean, there are you yeah. know, the yeah. class. You could look at just about every Terrence yeah. play and and pick out a performance that has stayed yeah. with you your whole life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh hey Caitlin, how you doing? Uh I'm doing great. What, what are the people online saying? Yes. All right. So this first question is Stella on YouTube wants to know, John, what is your favorite part of live theater, especially right now? My favorite part of live theater is right now is, you know, uh, the conspiracy between human beings on a stage and human beings sitting in an audience. I mean, that doesn't happen in the, the movies because the human beings in the piece aren't there anymore. They've been gone for a year. It really is like you know, you do it, you rehearse the play, you tech it, and then an audience comes in and the entire thing takes on a completely different meaning and experience. And uh, man, I really miss that, especially having just come off the high of 1,700 people a night being at the Emerson Colonial and having that communal experience. It really is a, uh, it really is something I'm missing terribly. Can't wait to experience. was it was it different as a director than as an actor? Like, what's what's the difference when you're like uh, gauging the audience reactions? Yeah, and you're not on stage also performing. Can I curse on this show? Go for it. It's fucking terrifying. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I, Sam Mendes, great, great director. Sam Mendes is a is a great old friend of mine, uh, and um, he said. He wrote me right before the first preview and I was like, I didn't realize it was going to be this scary. I thought it was only scary if you're in the play. And he said, the first <laughs> preview of a play you've directed is like having a blind baby and letting it walk to the edge of a cliff by itself. And <laughs> I could not agree more. Be because you love your actors so much. And God knows, I knew in this case, how brilliant they were and what yeah. the pros they were. But still, you feel like, uh, they, they can't do this without me. And then they do. And you then become superfluous very, very quickly. Um, yeah, but you you also have such a personal relationship with Sarah and Matthew that you also want them to succeed personally. Like there's so many layers to it. Absolutely. It becomes very codependent, very, very, yeah. <laughs> uh, but in a, in, a, in a good way. It, it was really exciting to be out in an audience um, and, and watching that and, and being on the other side, it really is like you're you're out in a completely different space, you know? Yeah, yeah. Did they love getting the laughs and finding the moments together? Yeah, they were loving it. Uh, yeah. You also watch that, and I, I, other directors have talked to me about this too. You watch them learn how to do the play. In a sure. Way you can't learn in rehearsal. You, mm. you learn what the values of the play are in rehearsal, but you don't know how to do the play until you're in front of people. Right. What else, yeah. Caitlin? Yeah. So Sedona on YouTube wants to know what role have you played that were that you were most like? Oh. Wow. That's really good. Uh, <laughs> uh, gosh, I, I I'm gonna say probably uh, in Love, Valor, Compassion. I played this guy Arthur Pape, who. Uh huh. He has the great line, like, I shouldn't be gay. I hate opera. I can throw a ball. Like, <laughs> I, I, I was always sort of like that guy. Um, uh, so I would say that. I would thank Terrence for giving me the part that was kind of closest to who I was as a human being. I love that. And I also think cool. he come out, too. I mean, like, I was like, yeah. 
I, you know, I, I was just coming out at that time. And I think without that play, it might have been a bigger struggle for me, maybe. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thanks for that, too, for so many things. Wow. That's amazing. I think we have time for one more question. And a lot of people, including Mary on YouTube, want to know, John, besides directing Plaza Suite, obviously, what else have you been up to while you've in quarantine? I know you got over being sick, but how are you spending your time now? That was uh, that getting getting over the uh, the illness was, was, was time consuming. But as I said to Paul at the beginning of the show, I, I, I'm so obsessed with this TV show, Babylon Berlin. I call it <laughs> But I am actually starting to irritate my friends by telling them. <laughs> I am so all about that show. I can't wait to see my friend Laura Linney in the in Ozark. Uh, a lot all right. Of Netflix. That's the that's the easy, simple answer to that question. A lot of Netflix. So wait, Babylon Berlin. It's 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 during World War II, right? It's to give us a setup. Eight and Berlin. It's the Weimar Republic. It's right. Before oh right. It came into power, and that city was just a absolute volcano of sexuality and 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 p police corruption and it's kind of a historical fiction it's the most expensive show produced in the history of europe so it's unbelievable wow. lavish and it's really really amazing how many seasons are there dude there's three and i've seen all three seasons twice now so now wow. the show i'm now fluent in german i can't <laughs> But when those people on that TV show are speaking to me, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check it out. Put it on your list, Paul. Is there, a, is there, a, um, is there a stage adaptation in there? Is there anything? Oh, I don't know. Babylon Berlin. I haven't seen Moulin Rouge yet. I can't wait to to see it. It sounds a little bit like the Moulin Rouge yeah. of European television. Sure. All right, we're gonna bring back Beth and Caitlin. The whole crew's back here. John. I could talk to you for hours. We went over because you're so charming and I'm so blah blah. I haven't talked to anybody in three years. <laughs> <laughs> because, excuse me, excuse me. We won't. We love it. Uh I'm we're so glad you're feeling better. Thank uh you very much. stay healthy, stay, stay rested, stay sane, and thanks for the highbrow tips. I love I love a we'll all get back to Broadway and off Broadway. Yeah. ASA. Yeah. I can't wait to see a Plaza Suite. They're dying to see it. These two, they were very. Everyone was jealous. Everyone was jealous that I got to see it. That's true. <laughs> very true. All right, stay right here, John. We're going to say goodbye to you after we go off air. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take a? Yes, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are continuing our Live at Five Home Edition live on both Facebook and YouTube. You can follow us along as a podcast by searching for hashtag Live at Five and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow when we finish out the week with Alex Brightman of Beetlejuice.